and welcome to Catalan News. It's happening. The Spanish government will strip Catalonia of its self-government due to the independence process. Although the Catalan government was reinstated after the Franco dictatorship in 1977, even before the Spanish constitution was drafted, Madrid will activate Article 155 of the Magna Carta to set direct rule over Catalonia. The Spanish government has the support of the two other big parties in Spain, the Socialists and Ciudadanos. What will happen though is totally uncharted waters. As the Catalan president has already said, Parliament will officially declare independence if autonomy is cancelled. Here at Catalan News, we have all the details. Let's begin. Madrid wants to take control of the Catalan government, the Catalan public TV, the radio and the Catalan police, the Mossos de Squadra. These are some of the leaked details of the Spanish government's plan of intervention in Catalonia to stop what Mariano Rajoy says is an illegal attempt to break up Spain. Although all the details will be officially unveiled tomorrow, we have learned already that the Spanish president is not setting a time limit on the intervention. Taking control of the Catalan presidency, public TV and the police and calling snap elections for January. These are the measures on the table to make direct rule in Catalonia effective. The Spanish government is talking to two opposition parties on how to enforce Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution and the main socialist opposition party says that the takeover of the public broadcaster, the Catalan police and presidential powers have already been agreed by all sides. Yet the Spanish president, Mariano Rajoy, did not confirm the statement. But what he did make clear is that there is no time limit for direct rule to be put into force. Y el límite, si se refiere al límite temporal, pues es algo que no está determinado, pero lo que importa es, como le he dicho, recuperar la legalidad y la normalidad institucional. A socialist spokeswoman said today that the seizure of the Catalan public TV aims to return it to neutrality. Yet the independent media regulator in Catalonia says that Catalan TV was the most diverse in its reporting of the October 1st referendum. In fact, a few minutes after the socialist representative's remarks, broadcasts on Catalan TV were suddenly interrupted. The issue, which lasted only a few minutes, was due to a power cut, leading to sighs of relief. The socialist spokeswoman also advised Catalan President Carlos Puigdemont to call an early election in order to avoid the enforcement of direct rule. In fact, the law says that he is the only one who can call Catalans to the ballot box, as stated today by Omnium Cultural, one of the organizations whose president is in jail. Que dos partits polítics eh uh, que són majoritaris de l'estat espanyol, però que en aquest sentit representen uh, el 20% dels diputats al Parlament de Catalunya uh, anunci, facin aquest anunci, doncs si més no sorprèn. Yet the plans in Barcelona are different. Puigdemont and the main pro-independence actors want to declare independence before direct rule prevents them from doing so. Spain's series of measures will come into force only after the Senate in Madrid ratifies them. That is likely to happen in a week's time. While rumours about a possible intervention of Catalan television and radio continue, today we saw several Catalan media editors appearing in Spain's Guardia Civil Police headquarters. They are being investigated for publishing Catalan government ads to promote turnout in the October 1st independence referendum during the weeks before the vote. On September 15th, Spanish police officers entered several newsrooms in order to hand in judicial requests, warning editors that they might face criminal charges. Els professionals que treballem i treballeu a TV3 i a Catalunya Ràdio seguirem garantint el pluralisme i el servei públic i seguirem treballant per, per aquesta garantia que ens ha encomanat el Parlament de Catalunya. As events continue to unfold, Today, civil society organizations in Catalonia called for a mass withdrawal of money from bank ATMs in order to pressure the Spanish government. The action targeted the main five banks, some of which have recently moved headquarters away from Catalonia and is the first in a series of peaceful actions expected soon. People withdrawing cash from ATMs. This may seem like an everyday occurrence, but today, for many Catalans, it was a political act. Pro-independence and civil society groups called for a mass withdrawal starting at 8 a.m. to put pressure on Spanish institutions, condemn the imprisonment of pro-independence leaders and also express discomfort with the two main Catalan banks' decision to move their headquarters out to other parts of Spain. 
We are in front of an ATM in Plaza Catalunya, in the center of Barcelona. As you can see, people keep arriving to withdraw their money. Earlier in the day, we've seen some lines of people in different spots across Catalonia, but at least here, when the offices opened their doors, uh, people started to, to come in inside the offices. Uh, some of the people who came were indeed following the call from pro-independence organizations. Other people didn't know anything about it. They were just on their way. Uh, they were just on their way to work. Uh, but according to the people we spoke to, at least, they, they told us that there is definitely more people today at this time than on a normal day. Organizers did not specify how much money people should take out. Some, though, chose a symbolic amount. For instance, referring to the Spanish Constitution article that the government in Madrid will trigger to take over the Catalan government. I took out 160 euros twice because 155 was impossible because there was no five, five uh, euro notes. So this is why 160, just because of the article. According to banks, the impact of the action has been quite limited. Still, it's been widely criticized by politicians such as Barcelona Mayor Ada Colau. A Catalan minister, as well as the leader of the Catalan's president pro independence party, have also expressed their discomfort with the measure. But some are indeed pleased with what they see as a much needed upgrade to what individuals are willing to do to pressure Spain. I'm happy because this is a more direct and impactful action and I think that this is what we need right now because they have done too much things to us already. Organizers call the mass withdrawal peaceful direct action number one. Seeing as the political situation shows no sign of cooling off, this name probably suggests that today's action won't be the last one. Catalans will continue mobilizing to denounce another recent development the incarceration of Jordi Sanchez and Jordi Cuixart, pro-independence grassroots leaders held in custody without bail awaiting trial for sedition. Free Jordi Sanchez, free Jordi Cuixart, in defense of rights and liberties. This will be the motto of the massive protest called for Saturday at 5 p.m. to peacefully demand the release of the two men. Organized by several civil society groups, the march calls on everyone to participate regardless of their political views. Already on Tuesday, 200,000 people gathered for a solemn, immense, candlelit march in the heart of Barcelona, asking for freedom and human rights. Jordi Sanchez and Jordi Cuixart have always urged restraint to protesters and have led a lot of very peaceful demonstrations. But Catalans saw a lot of violence on October 1st, the day of the referendum, due to the police crackdown on the vote. Today, the injured figures have been updated. A total of 1,066 people sought medical care, according to the Ministry of Health. 23 people were over the age of 79, while two of them were children under the age of 11. Over 80% of those that sought medical care suffered bruises and lesions. While those injured on the day of the referendum were 991, 75 more individuals went to see doctors in the days that followed until October 4th. 10% of the victims were over 65 years old. And let's change topic now and speak about good news, because recently the field of healthcare science took an important step forward. Doctors were able to implant the first biological heart valve in Catalonia, and the patient seems to be recovering very, very well. Enric Taulet suffers from an aortic valve disease. He realized that something was wrong when he fainted during an excursion. After several tests, doctors discovered that he had a degenerative aortic valve. At 66 years old, Enric is the first patient in Catalonia to have a new biological heart valve. He was operated on two weeks ago, and now he has returned to the Tretas Hospital, where the surgery took place for a post-operative visit. The cardiac surgery service of the Tretas Hospital in Girona has been the first one to implement this new biological heart valve. Contrary to the previous ones, the new biological heart valve has a longer optimal performance and doctors state that the patient won't need to be operated on for several years. The benefit is clearly very marked. For one part, in terms of durability and comportment of the valve, con, lo, con las repercusiones que tiene clínicas y por otra, en el supuesto caso de que la válvula o oh, eh, degenerara en un futuro por la expectativa de vida, no sería necesario reoperar al, al paciente. Biological heart valves have some other advantages over the mechanical ones. For instance, patients don't need to take anticoagulant medication or have a strict diet control. 
It is the third valve of this type that has been implemented in Spain. Now the Tritos Hospital will, will participate in a European study to analyze the advantages of the new prosthetist. So far, Enrique can't walk 40 kilometers a day as he did before, but he keeps working to take part in, once more, the Santiago Way next year. Not only science, but also culture is flourishing in Catalonia. Today we propose you to discover a new exhibit on Picasso's life through the eyes of one of his many friends, a famous Catalan poet. A new photo exhibit invites museum goers into Picasso's life through the eyes of one of his close friends, the Catalan writer Josep Palau y Fabra. The collection sheds light on the city's relationships, even the objects that influence the painter and his work. En aquesta exposició el que convidem és a observar a Picasso amb els ulls de Palau i Fabra i per això eh, fem servir les fotografies que el Palau va fer dels jocs, dels racons picassians, del que seria la cartografia picassiana. No? Throughout his friendship with Picasso, Josep Palau y Fabra became an expert on the artist. The writer took various pictures of the places that the painter held dear. Today, the images open a window to a unique view onto Picasso's life and the cities that shaped his art. For instance, his hometown of Malaga, Barcelona, and Paris. As Palau collected information on Picasso, the painter readily provided personal material, some of which is featured in the exhibit. Some of the personal affairs on display are handwritten letters, dedicated books, even art. The experience concludes with interpretations of one of Palau's iconic photos of Picasso, as done by seven important artists. The collection will be on display until January 14, 2018, in the northern Catalan town of Caldas d'Estrac, after which it will move on to cities like Paris and Barcelona. And that's all for us today. We'll be back tomorrow with a special show on the protests and the potential intervention of Catalonia's autonomy. We leave you now with some images of a new exhibition featuring the initial designs of the unique stained glass windows of the Sagrada Familia. Everybody knows the Catalan architect, Antoni Gaudi, but this could be a perfect occasion to discover the artist, Joan Villagrau, the mind behind the cathedral's colorful windows. You can do it in Sala Pares until December 3rd. Thanks for watching. Thank you.